Hello and welcome back to the channel. Recently I posted onboard footage of my GPS guided six wheel rover driving some waypoint missions around the farm here. Today I want to go deeper into the history of this project, how I arrived at the six wheel rover setup, and what sort of modifications and prep I did in order to make the vehicle more adapted to self driving. I hope to continue this series of videos to further explore the electronics, the sensors, the motor controllers, as well as how it was all integrated to the SAM D21 Arduino board, which is what ultimately controls the vehicle. I would also like to go in depth into the navigation program, which was written from scratch specifically for this application. So be on the lookout for those videos as they come along. So for now, let's talk about the car. I suppose I should start by saying that this is not the first autonomous vehicle I built. In fact, Ever since my interest in robotics was first sparked as a child, I have always been particularly intrigued with the concept of machines moving around their environment under their own direction. Actually, I think anything resembling a robot is pretty cool. Even though most of my robot projects are really not much more than radio controlled toys, there is something extra cool about building and programming a machine that is able to go out and explore its own environment. Now, having said that, one could argue that even my GPS guided machines are not truly autonomous and self-directed since they're simply following pre-written instructions to guide them along a particular path, all the while being guided by an error corrected GPS stream coming from an outside source. Nonetheless, I think it is the fact that we can watch these machines doing their thing, making their way along without anyone being at the controls, so to speak, which is again, what I think is very rewarding to see in operation. So let's talk about the car. Now, originally the physical vehicle chassis I built was not actually supposed to be an autonomous rover. Back when I was a firefighter, I had the opportunity to assist one of our local law enforcement agencies with converting a hazmat vehicle to carry one of their bomb disposal robots. This was one of those Andros tracked robots with the articulated front tracks on them. You may have seen them on the news or being used by military EOD teams. Needless to say, I was fascinated to be working around such a cool machine back at a time when robotics was still an obscure and somewhat inaccessible technology for the average person. At some point, someone reached out to me from another agency who said, those bomb robots are great and everything, but our team could never afford such a thing. What we really need is something lightweight and affordable that can just carry a camera up a flight of stairs inside a building. That got me to thinking about what a radio controlled uh, rock crawler type RC car might do in that job. And uh, this six wheel rover was the result of my months of building, testing, modifying and retesting something that could simply climb stairs reliably. But as I eventually learned, it is very difficult to get any wheeled vehicle to climb stairs, particularly a vehicle this small. And if the track, if the stairs are somewhat smooth, so even though the stair climbing robot did not pan out, I was left with an extremely capable six wheel rock crawler, which has tons of torque, four wheel steering, and maybe most importantly, a compliant and well-tuned suspension, which as it turns out, can be very helpful when it comes to integrating sensitive electronics and self-driving functionality. My approach to the stair climbing challenge was to start with the most robust and capable existing off the shelf radio control car I could find at the time, which for me was the Traxxas Emax. The vehicle you see here is just the result of repeated testing and upgrades, trying to get the vehicle to climb stairs reliably. I started with the stock vehicle and when I saw that it was not able to climb stairs reliably as it was, I mounted the biggest tires I could find that would fit on the vehicle. The car then no longer had the torque necessary to push those big tires up the vertical stair risers. So I eliminated one of the dual drive motors and built a four to one gear reduction to give it further torque. That may seem counterintuitive to remove a motor to increase torque, but as it turns out, the additional gear reduction was so much that having a second motor would have just been overkill at that point. With the torque increased to true rock crawling status, I then had to replace the nylon drive shafts with aftermarket titanium upgrades as the stock ones would simply shear off every time I came in contact with any kind of serious obstacle. By then the car had serious torque and power, but even with four wheel drive, 
it had a tendency to either high center on the stair nose or to flip over backwards if it did manage to push its way up the stair riser. It appeared that the whole chassis needed to be longer and that the drive wheels needed to be farther apart in order for them to span from one stair to the next. That's how the six wheel concept came about. So I don't want to get too far into the weeds about how I converted the four wheel drive front steer Traxxas Emax truck into a six wheel drive four wheel steer machine, but stick with me and I will try to give you the condensed version. So the idea was to take my existing four wheel drive car and buy whatever spare parts would be necessary to splice just the front half chassis and running gear of a second car onto the back of the first one. This second front end would be mounted facing backwards so that we would now have the original four wheel drive vehicle at the front with the additional steering axle now at the back. The obvious first and most difficult challenge I faced was how to feed torque from the original drive line and rear differential back to the new second rear differential. I had seen how some of the tandem axle vehicles I had worked with in the fire service had a shaft which passed power out the rear of the front differential and into the second. So that is how I decided to do this. I bought a second rear differential case and pinion gear and essentially what I did was to cut the two differential cases in half and then splice the two front halves together so that both the front of the differential and the rear of the differential would have a pinion gear engaged in the ring gear. Since the two pinion gears are the same number of teeth, Whatever speed goes into the differential from the front gets reduced by the ring gear, but then the rear pinion just increases that output back to the original speed, and you now have a place to mount a small drive shaft to drive the second, or what is actually the third, differential. It was finicky work, and I'm sure I did a less than perfect job getting the gear tolerances just right again, but it does work. So the next unforeseen challenge was that I had a car that was way too long. I had wanted to increase the length, but it was way too long, like almost four feet long. So I, so I eventually realized that it really wouldn't be such a big deal to shorten the vehicle. The drive shafts are splined just like on many real trucks. So it was really just a matter of cutting and splicing the chassis frame using some aluminum angle stock and rivets and then shortening the drive shaft to fit. I shortened the front half in that way and, well, it was still too long. So then I gave the rear half the same treatment and that's how we arrived at what you see here. Next was the steering, the front steering to uh, two servo control. And then obviously I had to do the same in the back, but once that was done, I had basically a four servo steering arrangement. Now you might be wondering how I could control the steering. In the end, it was not all that hard to figure out, just a lot of messy looking wiring considering it is all just for the steering. Each pair of servos front and rear is connected to a servo cable splitter. Then the front and rear servo splitter cables are fed into an adjustable servo mixer cable. And this way, the single steering signal from the radio or microcontroller was fed into the mixer cable where I was then able to invert the signal to the rear servos and then fine tune the ratio between the front and rear steering signal so that they would be in alignment at neutral and then steer together in coordination with one another. After that, the only other mods I made were in fine tuning the shock absorber oil and the spring rates at the six wheels. This ability to tune the suspension over such a wide range is what really ended up making this car such a good candidate as a robotic vehicle. Even though it was not what I originally had intended for the vehicle, it has turned into as robust and reliable and capable a platform as I could ever want for its purpose, which is to serve as a test platform for proof of concept for my navigation systems, onboard electronics, and GPS package. Well, that's all I have for now. I appreciate your time with me here going over all this. Next time, we will take a closer look at the Compass and the GPS setup all the things the vehicle needs to find its way around in the world. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.